What is going on YouTube? Carter here with Edged Mindset. We've got another video for you. We're going to be taking a look at the beautiful, beautiful Vandermeulen Barely Legal. This is a custom knife made by Jeff Vandermeulen. Uh, before I jump in, let me do a little history, a little history lesson. Come back with me to when I was a a bright-eyed and bushy-tailed young man in the early 2010s, just getting into custom knives, came across Jeff Vandermeulen's intro knife, which is very similar to this one, a little bit bigger, and I had to have it. It was one of the first custom knives that I had ever purchased. Um, I don't think I want to go as far as to say it was the first custom knife I've ever purchased. It may have been. I don't recall. But if it wasn't the first, it was right there, right up there. It also kind of depends on uh, what you consider some other knives, like a Dyer Ware. Is that a custom or a Mintech? But uh, one of the first true customs was uh, Jeff Vandermeulen knife. It was the intro, which was, uh, I believe, his first model, which is why it was called the intro. Um, and it was very similar to this. It was a flipper, liner lock, a little bit bigger than this. This is the Barely Legal, and I actually owned a Barely Legal as well but I sold it. I've got videos out there, or at least a video. No, I know I multiple videos talking about those two knives. Now, granted, these are videos that are nine years old, uh, so they look like they were shot with a potato. Not very good high-quality stuff. Uh, lighting was terrible. Sound was terrible, but uh, they're there nonetheless if you want to check them out. Those were uh, kind of just regular models, right? Hand satin finish, no compound grind, uh, no Damascus. Uh, just... I think it had carbon fiber and titanium bolsters, uh, pocket clip, very similar. Very cool knives. Sadly, I, I sold both of those. So I've been attracted to uh, Vandermeulen's designs, been attracted to his designs for a long time because he, he kind of, uh, for me, he would bounce between having a very unique kind of design language, you know, with a lot of cool curves and shapes as you can see right here like it's definitely distinctive and it's definitely um powerful I, I don't know i'm struggling with words a little bit trying to describe this but it's not obnoxious right these are very usable practical knives now you know are they the most practical is this my top choice for a user knife to throw in your pocket probably not but uh compared to some other customs that i get into where I really like to swing for the fences in terms of being overbuilt and crazy and things like that. Uh, Vandermeulen's are very usable, and you'll see that if you join the Vandermeulen group on Facebook. A lot of the people that are into his knives are very into using his knives. And I don't just mean carrying and cutting open packages. I mean hunting, dressing deer, you know, doing all kinds of things with his knives. So that's kind of part of the culture of Vandermeulen is his fans uh, are big into using them. Even if they are beautiful specimens like this, they use them and uh, they're proud of it. So let's, let's get some specs out of the way. Let's talk about this. So this is the barely legal model. Now that is not a sexual reference. Some people think it is. Um, some people think it's some sort of weird, gross, uh, sexual thing. It, it, what it refers to is the blade length. So the blade length, blade length is 3.75 inches. So it's under four inches, which is the legal limit for carrying a knife in a lot of States, right? So he made this knife because his intro was not legal to carry in a lot of States. And so this one is barely legal to carry, right? And obviously it is a pun on the, the age type thing. Uh, but primarily it has to do with the size of the blade and being legal to carry in various states. And just to confirm that blade length, which I've already done, and it, it is spot on, like tip of the blade to the beginning of the bolster is 3.75 inches. Overall length is about nine and a quarter. So good size knife, not obnoxiously sized. Let's do some, let's do some size comparisons while we're here. Paramilitary 2, you can see right there, bigger than the Para 2, uh, doesn't really, I mean, I wouldn't consider that it dwarfs it, it is bigger than a Para 2, Chris Reeves Inkosi, large, bigger than that as well, in fact, the Inkosi and the Para 2 are very similarly sized, so good sized knife, 
but not unreasonable. Now it is uh, it is a thick boy though, so that that is something I'll be talking about. It is a thick boy and it does have some weight to it. You can see how much thicker it is than the Para Two, and then way thicker than the Chris Reeve, way thicker. And the weight the weight is up there, and we'll talk about why that is. Some of the features here. So weight, what is it? Almost nine, eight point eight ounces. So yeah. It is heavy. It's got a lot of material to it. Speaking of material, boom, there's a segue for you. Let's talk about material. CTS XHP Steel. It is compound ground right there. Beautifully done too. Very even on both sides. Got a nice, nice swedge here. I like the upswept tip. Oh, with the clip taken out here. Oh, so nice. Hollow ground on the flats. Nice and thin behind this edge. It is razor sharp. Flat ground on the front here for more heavy duty work that you're gonna do. Stronger tip, won't chip, won't roll as easily. Thicker behind the edge, also won't slice as easily. Uh, but down here is where you do all your slicing work. Nice and thin, very good. Very, very good for cutting, yes indeed. Uh, the flats are hand satin finished, and then you have a high grit finish on the grinds. And this thing, man, <laughs> It is like such a smudge factory. It is something else. Beautiful blade, flipper design. You can see Vandermeulen's logo right there. Simple, classy V, absolutely love it. Got some really good aggressive jimping here. Not too grippy, but definitely usable. Everything is nicely done and finished. Satin finish, hand sand satin finish on the spine there. Beautiful blade shape, uh, just really like it. The original Barely Legal that I owned was not compound ground, and I definitely prefer the compound grind on this. It looks stunning. Uh, bolsters, yes. Mokutai, front and back. The non-show side is a little bit stronger on the Mokutai. You got a little bit cooler of a pattern there than on this side, in my opinion. It's also a little bit brighter, a little bit uh, more colorful. Um, not sure why he chose this Damascus, maybe he, well, he probably, I know why, because he cut the Damascus before he uh, anodized it and you couldn't really see the pattern, that's why. Uh, just to answer my own question, don't you love it when you do that, when you answer your own question? So yeah, when dealing with Damascus like this, you just don't really know until you kind of do the final step, which is the anodizing, and then you kind of see it come to life. Um, so in this case, the non-show side is a little bit stronger than the show side, but still looks really good. Scrambled carbon fiber, not my top choice, on the scrambled, I'd prefer marbled or uh, maybe even standard, I don't know. The, the scrambled always seems a little bit dirty to me. And it always has more like voids and stuff. Some people really like that, I not myself, but uh, nothing wrong with, with it, that's just how, how it is, that's how it looks. Uh, sculpted Tamascus clip right there, beautiful anodization has really thick titanium liners. This is a liner lock. You can see it's chamfered inside of that inside liner. Nice early lockup, and it is rock solid. No budge, really, really nice. Single standoff in the back. Everything is blasted. Everything is nice and even. You can see how everything mates perfectly well Obviously, this is a flipper design, as you can see right there with that big flipper sticking out the back. Um, he has modified his design. It used to be this would come to a sharp point, and a lot of people complain because it wasn't very comfortable to use because with how his flipper is designed, you press right on that point. So he has since flattened that out and smoothed it out, so you no longer have that, that issue. Speaking of flipping, this thing flips better than any knife I think I've ever flipped. I'm being honest. It is so good. And you can see how thick that blade stock is. So there's a lot of mass shooting out. It shakes your hand. It flips so hard. It shakes your hand. It is such a good system. It's running on IKBS. So for those that don't know, when you're talking bearings and knives, usually you have two major types, loose bearings and caged bearings. Uh, this is loose bearing. So if you open up this knife, you're gonna see a channel in that blade and there's gonna be a bunch of little tiny balls in there. So you gotta be really careful if you take any IKBS knife apart, those balls are gonna go <laughs> everywhere. Insert joke there. Uh, 
caged bearings obviously easier to deal with but they're just they're not as smooth like if you want maximum smoothness in my opinion ikbs is still the winner um, there's overhead with that they're like i said they're harder to deal with uh, but you're going to get the smoothest action with the ikbs because you're you're reducing any point of friction, additional friction when you do that. But uh, IKBS, and then it has internal stop pins, so you're not gonna see any stop pins other than the closed stop pin. Oh, actually, no, there is no closed stop pin, sorry. Uh, so there's a channel in the blade tang itself, and then there's an internal stop pin that acts in the open position, it hits this side, and then when you close it, it hits the other side. Um, so you're not going to see any stop pins anywhere in this construction. Very clean, open construction, single pillar, very beautiful overall design. Really like this one. Flips like a monster. Nice mid-dressed, right? It's not got the, uh, the Damascus on it, but it does have Mokutai all over the place. Really nice, really nice knife. Um, this is the Vandermeulen Barely Legal mid-dress edition it is a looker all right guys leave any comments down below any questions anything i didn't cover anything i got wrong it's quite possible i did a lot of things wrong let me know what your opinion is on this knife would you own something like this and if you did own something like this would you carry it that's that's the question i have would you carry this or would you keep it as a safe queen i'm gonna carry it i think um i don't know we'll see all right guys take it easy i'm out